Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com here and uh, I've got four wines here today that defy categorization. Not that they're wines that you've never have come across but uh, I usually try and group them together so I go do like a few Chardonnays, a few Sauvignons and so on but I don't have any others of these around at the moment to try. Um, for example, first one, uh, we've got an Uni Blanc Colombard, Van de Pey de Côte de Gascoigne. Um, there was a theory, Côte de, Van de Pey de Côte de Gascoigne was one of those wines that got popular, um, I think really late 80s, and it was at a time there was a footballer called Paul Gascoigne around Gaza, and um, someone has a theory that the wine became popular because of that. I've got a theory it became popular because it was actually quite nice. Um, it made a quite a big change from a lot of uh, standard cheap French wine in that it tasted quite nice. It almost tasted like it wanted to be Sauvignon. I mean the grapes here, Uni Blanc and Colombard, they're the sort of grapes that uh, once upon a time they would have been turned into uh, Cognac and Armagnac and stuff like that. But um, with everyone drinking a bit less spirits, they needed something else to do with the grapes and they started making this wine. And this winery, uh, Domaine de Tarake, run by a guy called Yves Grasser, was one of the first to really get it right and uh, they've been doing, they've been getting it right for ever since then. So uh, should be nice zippy fresh wine. True to form, it's exactly what it is. You, you could be forgiven for mistaking it for Sauvignon because it's got that zesty grassy edge. Got a, something a bit, a bit weightier as well behind it. Ah, I don't, I'm not sure exactly how much it costs, but it's about it's about five or six quid, and it does exactly what you want at that that price. It's got zest, it's got zip, it's got this green gauge lime, that type of um, that type of flavour there. Um, and honestly, I mean, it's one of those wines, um, the Van der Pey de Côte de Gascoigne White, where uh, you can't. Yeah, there are probably some bad ones around, but they're very rare. It's not something that people do with great ambition, but they just do it well. It's clean and exactly what I want from a, um, a clean, juicy, simple wine. Um, and it shames quite a lot of the Sauvignons that are about twice the price as well. Mm. Ah, perfect for a really shitty day outside. Oh, the wind's blowing and... Uh, but inside, it's warm, so is my heart. Argento Pinot Grigio, um, from, uh, from Argentina. Argento is a winery that's uh, part owned by the Catena family. Uh, well, I think it's entirely owned by the Catena family, but it's, uh, it's made in a, in a separate winery. And um, Pinot Grigio, well, I, Pinot Grigio, have to confess that I have tried some fabulous ones, but the bulk of it is there for people who really don't like too much flavour in their wine. Pinot Grigio's forte is that it is what I call CFDN, crisp, fresh, dry, neutral. It's wet and it's alcoholic, and I know a few people like that too. Um, it shouldn't be very demanding. In fact, an hour or so, and never mind an hour, a minute after swallowing it, you probably can't remember what it tastes like and I put my nose in there and it smells of, well there's a bit of peaches, a bit of something like that. It's got this quite nice nutty texture. It's so inoffensive. I, is that, I mean there are so much wine around, given the choice I would rather put things far more interesting in my body than uh, the most Pinot Grigio. There are some great ones, mainly from uh, uh, northeastern Italy, but there's a lot of dross around. Sorry, Pinot Grigio. It's you'll see. It's not my favourite grape variety. It's weird because when in Alsace, when they uh, when they do their Pinot Gris there, uh, they they really do. They they make some fabulous wines with the same grape variety. And in the way that I suppose Syrah and Shiraz, they, they people label it differently around the world depending on what they want to do. French style Syrah or Australian style Shiraz. So people who are uh, labelling their Pinot Gris or Pinot Grigio will label it if they want to do something sort of quite neutral and send that, that sort of north centre Italy uh, they'll put Pinot Grigio on if they want to do something a bit fatter and uh, weightier and fruitier they'll often put Pinot Gris. Next one down um, 
We're back in Italy. Uh, not Pinot Gris this time, but Suave. 2008 Fiorellino Suave. Uh, Avery's own label. I think it's about six quid or something like that. Now Suave is a much debased name, but um, in the, it got a reputation for some reason, and that reason was because there is some great Suave. Uh, I look at producers like Inama, uh, Anselmi, Piero Pau, and they make really fabulously rich, concentrated Suaves that um, are able to age and speak of the place that they come from. They've they, they got this earthy mineral undercurrent. undercurrent. This one's a bit more on the um, on the crisp, fresh, dry, neutral side, I have to confess. Not a wine that's uh, going to uh, get me reaching for my thesaurus because I've run out of um, exhortative terms for its quality. No. Maybe slightly more almondy um, than the, uh, the, the than Pinot Gris, but um, its forte, again, is its inoffensive quality. Okay, for six quid. Okay, final one. Uh, Al uh, another Avery's one. Alsace, Avery's selection, 2007, from um, a co-op uh, called the Cav Vinicol de Hunnevier. Uh, Alsace has got some really good co-ops. So, um, it, if you in, in most parts of the, the, the world, if you see a wine from a co-op, you sort of approach it with a bit of caution. But in Alsace, they've got some top-notch ones. Like uh, Rickveer is a good one, Hunnevier is a good one, Turkheim is a good one, and um, this is a blend of uh, not premium grape varieties, uh, but uh, yeah, blend of standard Alsace uh, grape varieties like Pinot Blanc. What's its own here? Pinot Blanc, Silvana, Pinot Gris, Gewurztraminer, Muscat, Muscat, and Chasselas. Uh, sometimes they label wines like this Edelsvicker. Uh, which is a very friendly name to pronounce. More T Edelsvicker. No, this one's just labelled um, Avery's Selection Alsace. And it's got a lot of those very aromatic characters going on here. It's got that grapey edge uh, from the Muscat. It's got a slight bit of spice from things like the Gewurztraminer. It smell, it's one of those wines that uh, you'd, you'd think is it, it smells slightly sweet. Is it going to be sweet or not? You never know in Alsace. Um, not really sweet, maybe just, just a tad off dry. Yeah, that grapey quality. Fat, grapey. Um, I prefer, I would prefer it if it were just like a little bit more pure. I, I mean, my favourite Alsace grapes are, uh, re tend to be Riesling and uh, I, I, like, I like Muscat, but I think that here um, some of those other grapes have just added some flesh to it without necessarily adding quality. But fair enough wine, it's about seven pounds. Um, and certainly it's, of these uh, these four, I like this and the Tarake the most. Uh, they've got they've got some weight behind them. They've got aromatics, and uh, they actually leave your mouth thinking I've had a wine rather than just have had something vaguely wet and slightly entertaining. 